Hello guys, hey, RipperX here with MMORPG.com and FPS Guru. I'm here with Dean Rocket Hall, the man behind Daisy and the Daisy Standalone. How's it going? Yeah, really good. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How's PAX treating you? Yeah, good. It's, uh, I mean, I went to PAX Prime last year. I really yeah. enjoyed that, and I've really enjoyed it here, too. I actually awesome. got to play a couple of games on the shop That's, that's so. always good. I'm sure you're busy as well. So Yeah, pretty busy. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the Daisy Standalone. I know a lot of people are interested in what you guys, you know, what you have to say. And um, I guess, uh, to begin with, what in the next couple of months, what are we going to see from uh, the Standalone? Well, we're, um, I'm, I'm actually going to be away because I'm climbing Everest for, oh, for two months. Uh, but... Um, we're continuing with development. I have to pay like $8 a minute or something to access internet. But um, So we're basically locking down and we're going to finish off this server client architecture, which I've talked about a bit before. So um, that allows us to move into more like the MMO model, more like World of Warcraft, how everything is done on the server. Gotcha. Uh, and that's kind of the most critical thing. That's what's delaying the release of our alpha. We can't release the alpha until that's finished. Right. Like, it's, it's kind of pointless too. Totally. And, and the zombie pathfinding system, for example, that's going to be server side as well for the new. Yes. And is, what, what's the benefit of that? What is what's that going to bring to the table? Well, there's a, there's a couple of benefits. Uh, one of the benefits that it's not really one that we necessarily needed, but it, it, so much stuff is moved to the server, it improves client FPS because gotcha. that's huge. The, the client's not having to do rage casting and stuff like that. Uh, gotcha. It's required us to heavily optimize the server because suddenly okay. the server is taking on a massive load. Right. Uh, but it also means that at the moment you see the zombies spawn in when a player is around. So awesome. you can tell whether a village has players in it or not, whether there's zombies around. So that's removed. We can also start doing more cool stuff like roaming zombies, zombies that may follow you for a long distance, track <laughs> you and that kind of stuff. So it really opens up those doors. Gotcha. Are the zombies going to be a little bit harder? Are they like in, for this, you know, for this standalone? I know, uh, you know, with the with the previous Daisy, sometimes you can get away from them, or they'll kind of, you know, go in a, a buggy pattern here and there. Um, are they going to chase you? Like you said, they're going to chase you for longer periods. Um, it's going to be a little bit. Yeah. Well, like yeah. where armor was never designed to deal with interiors. Okay. So you have yeah. these path lods. So they kind of run on rails when they're on an interior of a building. Yeah. We're not happy with that as a result, uh, yeah. long term. But for the alpha, at least, we're going to stick to that. We're just going to kind of make it work. So what we have done, and people might have seen on the previous dev blogs, is we've changed the way the zombies to work much better, certainly out of doors. Gotcha. Um, and uh, so they're definitely going to be more of a threat, and that's, that's our intention. But we've also slowed the speed they run down a bit because it was a bit ridiculous. Gotcha. And that's good. <laughs> we've got a new animation skeleton, all new animations, and we're also going to implement that for the character too. Awesome. So one one big thing in in the new standalone, and I just know a little bit about it, the crafting system. What's mm -hmm. going to happen with that in the new standalone? That's one huge area of development. We're that's probably good. one of our more exciting ones. You know, we really want the player to explore the inventory they find as well as the world because inventory is sort of daisy's leveling daisy doesn't have an xp system your your experience is the loot you find and Absolutely. we kind of really like how you know the the danger of, of you can lose that so it's a very sort of organic way to collect experience so part of that is interacting with the loot you find to find out what you can craft and what you can't and so i'll show you a bit later like uh the basic rudimentary what we're coming up with in terms of dragging loot onto other loot to see if you can craft it and disinfect items or like screwing uh, gas canisters onto a uh, gas um, cooker and then putting water on it and boiling it and that kind of stuff. That's so, awesome. It's going to give it's going to give players the ability to basically salvage anything and, and experiment with um, with a lot. Yeah, of stuff. yeah. So we, we kind of want to bring the inventory to life for a bit more. So an example is you might find a hammer. Well, you can use that hammer as a melee weapon, or you can use that hammer to to break something open and stuff like that. So. We really want to to add that kind of depth to it. Gotcha. A lot, a lot of the stuff we added doesn't necessarily have a purpose now, but the idea is over the over the 12 months after we release the alpha, we can slowly enrich enrich in the world a bit. Gotcha. And let's talk about I guess the inventory system as well. I know it's a lot more detailed. It's, it's an overhaul um, from the previous Daisy. Um, do you have any input on that? Yeah. So we took a massive risk in August September, and and I. You know, December was a pretty grim month for us because we, we really had nothing to show for it and we, were, we felt like we were quite far behind. But when January came, it really started to pay dividends. And uh, while we haven't done an art pass on the inventory system yet, we're really happy with how it's performing in multiplayer in that. So it's, much, it's a drag and drop uh, style inventory. Um, it's, it's quite heavily inspired by the original XCOM in terms of how you configure out where stuff slots cool. in. Very cool. Uh, and um, it's container based. So, uh, you know, a, a t-shirt won't have any slots to put items, but a, a hoodie will have pockets and, um, 
and the jeans, and when you put that item on the ground, it will retain its items and all that kind of stuff. Very so, cool. A lot more detail. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've also got the hot key bar, um, okay. which we're experimenting with. Uh, a lot of inspiration taken from Minecraft and a little bit from the idea in you know, World of Warcraft where you can customize how, how you want stuff. Because we're very conscious of the fact that everybody plays Daisy in a different way. and. Sure, once you've figured out the Arma 2 inventory system, it was kind of okay, but we, we sort of want, yeah, the players feel way more connected with their avatar, and yeah, that's Absolutely. what our inventory system is about. Very cool. And engine-wise, this isn't Arma 2, it's, uh, it's not Arma 3, it's, uh, it's a customized engine, right? Just for Yeah, Disney? and as, I guess that's been the hardest message to try to get to, across to people is, and th this is why originally in December, last December, we were planning on releasing the mod, put in, in with its own EXE and just kind of released. Uh, but we realized we had the opportunity, and because the sales had so, been so strong with Armour 2, that we could actually take time and, and and kind of do the game that we'd always wanted to make. So cool. that's meant that we've had to go back and, and, and kind of look at things from scratch. Yeah. So, Very cool. Um, it's, yeah. it's a whole new, we, we've cut complete sections of it out. So the inventory system, basically we just sort of commented out the whole inventory system from Armour and just kind of read it from the ground up. And that has allowed us now to move towards uh, attachment system, crafting system, and that kind of stuff. A lot more detail. Yeah. Very cool. Um, can we expect uh, an open beta or a possible release, or is there, um, uh, obviously it's coming, but is there any uh, specific dates that you're planning, or is it kind of, you're just kind of going day by day? Well, we're going to, we're not going to do anything before June. Okay. So we're going to review the situation in June. We're kind of going into almost sort of a lockdown for the next two months where our programmers are just going to purely focus on what they're doing. So we have our lead programmer, Andres Spaniel. Um, he's one of the founders of the company. He's working on the server client architecture. He's just dedicated to that. We're also working on the character um, controls, completely redoing that. Obviously continuing with the inventory and crafting system, radios, um, yeah, all sorts radios. of stuff like that. Radios. That yeah. is awesome. Actually, that's done. It's just not um, committed. It's just not committed in yet. And Very cool. What, it was, what? Yeah, uh, one thing. Uh, one thing I loved about the original DayZ is the, the in-game voice chat. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, some very creative people that have uh, you know done some interesting stuff. Yeah, with, that's with right. That. Peter Griffin running around, <laughs> and, and I think in a vehicle I saw. Absolutely, yeah, it's very very cool. Uh, well, thank you so much uh, for taking the time sure. to talk to us. Always appreciate it. And uh, we do have a little bit of gameplay footage that Dean's going to show us. So uh, we're going to maybe uh, cut it and move the camera this way. Again, thank you so much, Dean. Appreciate cool. it. All the best with the release. Cheers. Thanks, man. This stuff here won't exist. So the idea in the standalone is that you will actually drag items off your avatar. So if I want to take the helmet off, I will click and drag and take it off. But for the moment, we haven't got the hit detection working, so we've just created a temporary little thing there. So I can drag um, some of these, these items off here like that. Um, and I can open up the container and see what's in them. So you can see there's no container on the motorbike helmet, but the blue jeans have six slots there. So I'll put this back on my dude, and I'll put a helmet back on my dude, and I'll have a look. So I've got three items in here, might be a little bit hard to see because my screen's really low. But so there's a gas cooker top, um, there's a, a disinfectant spray, and some beans here. So if I want to craft it, if I can hold it over items and I can see what I can craft and what I can't. So you can see that goes red, which means I can't do anything. That goes orange, which means I can. So if I hold it over it, I can disinfect the item. Awesome. And so it's telling me there that, um, you know, we've, I've, at the moment I've just got a temporary message. So I can, I can spray on that. Um, so with the beans and I can eat them and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. So um, obviously the possibilities are pretty huge there with us for what we want to do. Um, as well, um, one thing we're quite proud of is that the container system works in multiplayer when it's on the ground as well on that. So it's, it's a lot better in terms of dealing with stuff so you can actually... Um, you know, come back over to something and and and, and check it out, and um, and you can see all the items are there on the ground when you put it back on you. So the idea is to really make the player. I should probably turn that brightness oh, that up. <laughs> um, really make the player feel connected with their character, and that's why this avatar is really important. As well, we've got the context menu, which you can um, you can uh, sorry, not the context menu, the quick bar menu. So. Um, you can, uh, you can put stuff on. I'll just actually quickly hack myself in. And I'll probably get crap on the internet for this. Everyone's like, you're hacking your own game. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't have the internet. So, um, yeah, so I'll just drop that on the ground. And then add it back on. 
Um, so I have, um, so you can see how now this context menu here, so I can select, uh, select my weapon and go around. Now one other thing we're doing is, that won't be there as well, we're completely removing the, AI, uh, the, the UI, but one thing we're doing is we've taken a lot of feedback from Armour 3, we actually grabbed a couple of the guys who were working on the control system for that and said what would you do if you could do anything. So right now they're working on how to, how to implement and change the controls so it's much more fluid. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, but we're experimenting with a couple of ways. One way we might have it that your weapon always stays down and that you have to hold a key for it to stay up. And the other way we might just leave it like this, um, where you actually run around. So, you know, in the in oh, see, see, this is this is the example here of see how I have to hold down the space key to to lift the weapon up and aim. And we're we're hoping to do that to try and remove this shoot on sight mentality. So we're experimenting with a couple of ways to do it. We're not sure whether we're going to go with this way or whether we'll go with the armor three style way. But it's quite cool because then you just you know you're running along and then and then you're running along and oh yep I'm aiming I'm aiming so people nice. know then that I'm pointing my weapon at them. Right. Because I know from being a soldier myself you know it's really tiring to run around with your weapon always pointed at people. <laughs> if I go into is there going to be third person as well as first person? I know some servers on the Daisy, you know, would only have first person, and some would give the option of first and third. Um, yeah, so we we um, we like a lot of people are purists and say we just want first person. One thing we're we're doing is uh, th those in the game industry will know that often you have a separate skeleton for where your weapon is in first person from from third person. Armor doesn't have that, um, so that's why sometimes our first person view looks a bit terrible where the weapon's placed. Uh, so with the new skeleton we're implemented, it's not implemented for the player yet, but um, we're going to be able to do that. So we're going to make, make the first person view look a lot better. But we are going to add an option, and I think it's already in the options, uh, for players to change their perspective and stuff like oh, that. Oh great, yeah. great. That's awesome. We've been trying to add a lot more options, so you can see here the field of view. I don't know if you know if it's working yet. It, it no, looks like the clothing. Oh, wait, I'm in camera. That's why. Looks like the clothing Ooh, is a lot more detailed as well. And yeah, way more detailed. We got this really great Russian artist, um, and he's doing a really good job with it. So I think you can see here in the field of views working out. Is is it okay to show that red screen? Or yeah, okay. yeah, it's fine. So that's our. Um, <laughs> if everybody's curious about it, it gives us all this debug kind of information. It kind of shows how awesome the engine is. So cool. there's really debugging stuff. Yeah, of course. We're, we're really we try to be really open with our development. That's yeah. great. But you can see the sky's looking way better, and it's good. Um, all the interiors being like open is really cool, and the, being how, able to vault up stuff. How are the day and night cycles? I mean, does it still get really dark at night? And yeah, well, on... our night actually looks terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst thing at the moment in the game because we've played with the shaders for the day. Um, yeah, so, um, whoops, I keep opening that door. So you can see even the movement in doors is way better now. Um, Absolutely. And, and more, uh, oh, more buildings are going to be enterable as well? Or all of them are going to be enterable? Um, nearly all of them are going to be enterable. Okay. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, so we've got Goodness. a lot of new areas we've added. Oh, my dude's really tired. Uh, let's go back into this cool little camera moment. Something with the item spawning too, so yeah, it is. I wish I could show that right now. I'm going to try and show it in the panel, um, and uh, um, yeah, trying to show it in the panel uh, because now like items can just kind of spawn anywhere, like even in car wrecks and stuff like that. So oh, that's great. it's going to be pretty cool. But wow, the, um, this satellite map is going to look even better because we've just purchased new satellite imagery of. Um, of all the terrain. Um, Epic. So you can see even on this this crappy little laptop, it's still looking really It looks good. delicious. How, how is the map? It, I know the map's improved. I know you guys have added some stuff. It, are you going to focus on one map? On <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we are going to focus on this map. There's okay. a, people aren't really going to recognize it. There's whole new areas. So this gotcha. is an area we're quite, we're quite proud of. So this gives um, like all these buildings here, and we're actually working. One of our tasks for our artists is to make these all enterable, but they're going to be kind of abandoned ghost town type buildings, like the windows will be all smashed, and you'll really have to um, check inside these buildings. So I think this is going to be a real massive kill zone, like you can actually loot all these vehicles here and stuff like that. So it's going to be a real death zone, I think, this area. And this is actually right by Chernera. So it actually makes because you, know, you sort of look at Chernobyl and you're like, why is it so big? Because nobody lives here. But now you can see these uh, these areas where cool people additions. live. Yeah. A lot of bandits are going to be uh, hiding out there with their can of beans. Yeah, and... it's, it's going to be pretty challenging. So mm. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us that. That's just cool. uh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, Definitely. look, it's, it's got a long way to go. I'll, you know, but, but we're getting very close to that alpha. And 
we're spending a lot of time to make it, you know, it feel a lot better and, and um, yeah. I will tell you, if, if anything, it's better to delay a game and make it better than release it too soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, very cool. Thanks again, Dean. Appreciate cool. it. Awesome. Appreciate it, man.